What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mike Dolce Show here on the Dolce Diet YouTube channel. I appreciate you guys for being here. Today is Financial Fridays. We do this every Friday right around 11, 12 o'clock. I think we're going to be going about 12 o'clock noon Eastern Standard Time every Friday for these financial conversations that you need to hear, right? So, Mike Dolce, four-time World MMA Trainer of the Year, number one best-selling author, grew up poor, like extreme poverty, like out of a movie, you're going to cry watching it. That's how I grew up, and I was able to, to dramatically transform my life through financial education. Yes, work matters. Yes, hustle matters. Yes, all of that matters, but... Over the last 20 plus years, I've been able to surround myself with some of the most wealthy, influential, and financially astute individuals on the planet. I have mentored under multiple billionaires and hundred millionaires, decamillionaires, which is those with net worths of $10 million or more. Well, that's not very impressive anymore in, in my circle of friends. So I simply say that to let you know that when I speak to you, I'm speaking to you from first person perspective that is validated by evergreen principles that the world's richest and most successful actually use. Today, we're talking about the four bucket strategy and how the wealthy use the four bucket strategy to number one, gain their initial wealth. Number two, protect their wealth, and number three, create generational wealth. Now, the rich out there, the wealthy out there, they are no smarter than you, let me tell you. And they will tell you that first, and that's what they told me. And in fact, many of them are less smart than the average person, but they do a few things the average person does not do, and that's what sets them apart. There is no genetic aptitude for becoming rich, for becoming wealthy. Many wealthy people, they might not work as hard as the average contractor or barista or personal trainer. Those jobs are hard. You're sweating. You're getting callous. You're dealing with people that just make you want to freak out. Now, some of the rich and many of the rich and wealthy, well, they're not putting in that type of physical manual labor yet. Their lifestyle is, is so far surpassed what the average person is. And why is that? Well, I'm going to share that with you. First, I want to, how am I going to do this? I, I have two, I'm going to show you a video and feel free to leave any questions in the chat section. And by the way, I appreciate you guys for being here. Consider subscribing to this channel. Also consider subscribing to our sister channel, the brand new Mike Dolce Nose Channel, short clips, quick hits, guaranteed to add value to your life over on the Mike Dolce Nose channel. We really focus on fitness, fat loss, well, fitness and fat loss primarily. And then we do speak about the world of mixed martial arts, fighting, combat sports and such, and then some general lifestyle information, but it's mostly fitness and fat loss over on the Mike Dolce Nose channel. Now, I'm going to break this down. I'm going to give you very specific takeaways that you right now, you can do this right now, today, immediately. You do not need, now this is not financial information. Is that the way they say it? I am not a financial planner. I am not a, a certified financial planner. I am not a certified public accountant. You should have a certified public account. You should have a certified financial planner to discuss these things. So this is for education purposes only, right? That's all this is. This is, this is edutainment as we call it, but definitely do your due, due, due diligence and listen to what I'm telling you. And as I speak, you're going to be like, holy cow, this makes a great amount of sense. So the first thing I actually want to do, let me bring this on. The first thing I want to do is I want to help you understand what a general budget is. And for the purpose of this exercise, we will assume you make $100,000 per year as your household gross income. What is your gross income? Gross income is the amount of money you make in total, in total, before taxes, before expenses, before buying the wife new shoes and getting the baby diapers, $100,000 represents the total amount of money your household generates per year. Why $100,000? Because it's an easy number to break down the percentages for you. It's simply easy math. Although, you listening right now, if you do not yet make $100,000, that should be your first goal. 
every person here should be trying their damnedest to generate $100,000 in gross income per year. Period. The end. Full stop. No matter. And I can help you get there. That's I have many coaches inside our, our Dolce Diets coaches program that we have actually been able to help generate them, help them go from, let's say, 20, 30, maybe $40,000 per year as a certified trainer to making $10,000 or more per month, breaking through that $100,000 per year barrier. And there are some simple best practices that anybody can do in any um, craft, any niche, any, any skill set. That's a different video. So for this video, let's get down to the budget. Right now, we're going to say $100,000. And now, before we do anything, you listen right now. I don't care what you do. $100,000, that is how much you make over the course of a year. The first thing you need to do is you need to take out 25% for the man. That leaves you with $75,000. What do I mean by that? I mean, this $100,000 times 0.25 well, you got to pay the government $25,000 in taxes. Now, depending on your withholding rate, depending if you're a W-2 employee, an S-corporation, LLC, if you have certain write-offs, employees, blah, 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 that's all for you and your CPA. But in general, in general, 25% of everything you make immediately has to be taken off the top and given to Uncle Sam. Always pay your taxes, pay the government for, do not mess around with that. So, 25% immediately goes into a separate savings account earmarked directly for the government. Now, that leaves you with $75,000. Of this $75,000, this is now your net income. Gross income is 100. Net income, how much? The net, the fisherman's net. What you actually net out. Gross is how many fish are in the water. The net is how many fish actually get into the boat. $75,000 is what you actually keep. And that's awesome that you're doing better than the average American household if you're netting 75K per year. So this is the very doable budget. If you make $50,000, will you cut this in half? Right? That, that, that's simply the way it works. But $100,000 is an easy mathematical uh, formula for us to share with you. Now you have $75,000 and we're going to talk about bucket number one, 25%. Now, four-bucket strategy, and in this four-bucket strategy, all we're going to do is we're going to take your net income, we're going to divide it by four. So that $75,000 divided by four equals $18,750 that is allocated to each bucket. Do you understand this? This makes perfect sense. Your net income divided by four and put four equal piles. Bucket one, bucket two, bucket three, bucket four. For the purpose of this example, that is four buckets, each holding $18,750. Now, we're going to talk about bucket number one. And this is not in a particular order. This is a simply order of explanation. But at the end of this video, I will tell you the order of allocation. Right. So definitely pay attention to the end of this video. I'm going to rack it up here quick. And I have a, a video to share with you of Shaquille O'Neal, who very eloquently highlights exactly what I'm telling you right now, what I learned by mentoring under billionaires and hundred plus millionaires. Now, bucket number one, this is your housing budget. This means 25% of your take home, take home pay must be directly allocated to your housing only expenses. What are your housing only expenses? That is your rent or your mortgage, any taxes associated with your mortgage and any interest associated with your property ownership or tenancy, right? So 25% goes to your housing. Some of you are renting right now. That's fine. That means you cannot pay any more than 1,870. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Let me, let me times this by 12 or divide this by 12. This is your monthly. This means now, now, $1,562 per month, per month, not one penny more can be allocated to your household expenses. If you make $100,000 a year, you only keep $75,000 because 25 goes to the IRS. And of that, 
that $75,000, $18,750 per year is allocated to your housing expenses. Of that $18,750 per year, that breaks down to approximately $1,562.50. That can be spent not one penny more on your housing expenses. This is how you know if rent is too high, if you can truly afford the house that you want. And you must look at your rent. Rent is easier because typically you pay rent and that's it. Your landlord covers the taxes, they cover the interest, they cover all the little incidentals. If you purchase a property, well, this is your mortgage plus your PMI, which is pre-mortgage insurance, plus your taxes, your, your, your local state taxes, your property taxes, plus any interest on the loan that you also must pay. Housing only. Bucket number two. Well, bucket number two. Oops. Made that screen too big. There we go. Bucket number two is going back to the one thousand eight hundred uh, or eighteen thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. Five. Oh, this is bucket number two now. Bucket number two is what? This is your living expenses. Now listen to me here. This is the most important run. One. This is where many people blow it. Your living expenses can be no more then $1,562.50 per month again. Now, what are your living expenses? Well, that's your utilities. Most people try and push their housing costs or your, their utilities under their housing costs. That's not the way this budget works. That's why you break your budget. That's why you're broke. That's why you rob Peter to pay Paul. That's why you're always paycheck to paycheck because you do not follow the four bucket strategy. Stay with me here. Listen, to, let me break this down for you. On inside your living expenses, you have your utilities. That's your electric. That's your heat. That's your water. You have your phone bill, your Verizon, your AT&T, your ClearTalk, whatever it is. You, your utility, your phone, your car payment. That is part of your living expenses. That is not your housing cost. Your car payment. Gas for your car, your health insurance, your car insurance, and the food that you eat. Many of you are like, oh, Dolce, you are crazy. There's not enough money to live my lifestyle. Yeah, because your lifestyle is that of a poor person, a broke person who spends more on wants than they do on needs. This is why the rich get rich initially and why the rich become wealthy. Now, stick with me here. I'm going to take you all the way through to the point of wealth. Bucket number three. And please, in the chat, ask me any questions on these issues. I'm going to answer all these questions inside the chat. I expect a pretty context conversation here. Bucket number three goes back to, again, 1000 or 18750 which is... $18,750 per year is now dedicated directly to your retirement. 25% of all you make goes to your retirement. And I'll tell you what, kids, the earlier you start, the more powerful that money will be as you get older. The earlier you will be able to stop working, by the way, I digress. 25% of all that you take home right now goes into a 401k, a Roth 401k, an IRA, a traditional IRA, maybe your 403b, maybe your deferred compensation, uh, you know, mandatory contributions to your pension, depending on the way your jobs are set up. Maybe you're a, a sole proprietor, you have a, a, a sole 401k, or you have an S, an S or a SEP, a self-employed uh, retirement program. There's a bunch of different things, but you have to have at least one. You have to have at least one. And you must be, must be, must be investing into that 25% of your take-home income, which is how much? That is, again, these numbers are so easy, $1,562.50 per month. 
goes into your retirement. Now, it can be a 401k. It can be an IRA. It also can be certain types of investment real estate that appreciate and cash flow, but that money should be rolled right back into the property itself to buy more property, to be a large holding when you can then retire. This is, and speak with your CPA about this. There's ways to actually not pay taxes legally by keeping the money directly inside these properties as they continue on. You can actually hold real estate investments in a, in, in, in a vehicle that is very similar to a pension, right? This is one of the, the best ways, in my opinion, to ensure your long-term retirement happiness and security. Now, the last thing, we have 25% left. So the first 25% is housing costs. The next 25% is living expenses. Living expenses is your utilities. It's your phone. It's your internet. It's your car payment. It's your gas for your car. It's your health insurance. And it is your food. All of that gets lumped in the 25%. I don't care about the new Jordans or the new Yeezys or the newest version of the iPhone. You're not there yet because you're not rich and you're not wealthy. But I'm going to teach you how to get there and then how to buy anything you want. The last piece now, what we call the bridge account. This is bucket number four. This bucket, I won't say it's the most important bucket, but once you have it filled, it is the most important bucket. Why is that? Because this 25% of your take-home pay does not go into your pocket, does not go to Best Buy, does not go to Amazon, does not go to Apple, does not go to Ford Motor Credit, does not go to Applebee's or Buffalo Wild Wings or the UFC or Billie Eilish tickets, nothing. This 25% goes into after-tax investments that are dedicated to replacing your current income. Let me rephrase this. 25% of your take-home pay should be invested into appreciating assets that also cash flow to the point that these investments eventually will replace the money you currently make by going to your job. Let's, Because you go to your job right now, you make $100,000 per year. Good for you. That's nice. That's great. That's a good living. But 25% of this $18,750 per year, you see if uh, I won't pull up the calculator now, we can do that towards the end of the video. But we want to replace our current salary. And that's why we call it a bridge. So then... Your income is growing at twice the current rate that you can actually earn by working. And the money your money makes, that becomes the money that you buy your toys with. This is what the rich do. This is what the wealthy do. Now, on that, I want to reinforce this with a video of the great Shaquille O'Neal. And the video is sideways, but I didn't want to, I didn't have the time to reconvert it. It sounds great. You can hear it. Please take a moment here and let's listen. You know I mean, because I need to teach the youngins this. Because I see a lot of youngins mm. flossing their bag on the ground. Mm. Cool, floss it. But dude told me one time, this dude was, he told me, he said, You're rich, but I'm wealthy. Because I didn't know the difference. And I said, what's, what's the difference? He said, well, wealthy is when I die, when my kids die, when they kids die, when they kids die, we still gonna have the same amount. And I thought about that. Then I said, okay, how you do it? And he pulled out a piece of paper. After he said, it ain't about how much you make, it's about how much you keep. How many times we seen cats, we get the bag with a hundred, and then, then they go blow it the Absolutely. same day, now they got to get another hundred. So he said, if you got $100, you save that. That's 50. Mm -hmm. that, he said, rich people I say, okay, I'm saving 50 and I'm doing that. But he said, the wealthy does this. You save that. This, ball out. House, chain, car, whatever you want. But 75. Save it, yeah. That's what he said. So. From here on out. 
So I'm no longer saving thirty percent of my money. I'm stepping it up to seventy five because so I'm trying to be wealthy. So you told me that when I was ninety five, and I did that, and I didn't, I didn't spend my first NBA check until I started having having families, because I was making so much money and I wasn't that educated. So I was like, I don't want to spend it. I know that. Right. And like people always say, you got to invest and got to invest, but still you got to be educated to know what you're investing in. Right. Like I always used to try to invest in the get rich quick schemes. But did, if you how many of them did you fail? All of them. I failed all of them. Yo, man, me and Gilly gonna do this podcast. We gonna do the Shaq and Gilly hats. We gonna sell my line. We gonna uh, give me a hundred thousand next week. I bring you a million. Never worked out. Never. But then when I start investing in stuff that's gonna change people's lives, because I heard Jeff Bezos say that he invests in things that's gonna change people's life. That's why he created Amazon. Yeah. But again, like whenever I do business, it's not about the money. It's all right. Shaquille O'Neal right now, one of the richest post-career athletes in history. Shaquille O'Neal's net worth is absolutely astounding, and I am trying to get Shaquille O'Neal onto the Mike Dolce Knows podcast. So we have an amazing list of guests that will be coming onto the Mike Dolce Knows podcast soon. That is beside the point. We have Wes Watson, who's coming on this month. We have Stan Efferding coming on this month. Uh, we have Alwyn Cosgrove coming on this month, and quite a few other highly respected notables uh, that will be coming on. And, and you know, the, the, the pedigree of... of um, guest on the show will constantly increase. Now, I want to take some time and I want to answer your questions on what I discussed on the four bucket strategy. 25% of what you initially make, 25% of your gross, well, that goes to the IRS and to taxes. Pay your taxes. That leaves you with four equally funded buckets to cover your housing, your living, your retirement, and your bridge. Do not scrimp on this because in a very short period of time, if you put your nose down, if you hustle, if you earn as much money as possible through all your hustles, all your side jobs, all your side gigs, all of your savings, all of your cutting costs, you will see these buckets grow. Specifically, your investment buckets grow so big, so fast, they start generating cash flow to the point that you don't have to worry anymore about going to your nine to five to earn income because your investments are now earning the same income you're slaving for. And in a short period of time, you then have the choice to no longer slave for that cash because your investments are growing at such a rate that you cannot even earn what your investments are making. And that's how the rich get rich, stay rich and become generationally wealthy. Let me answer some questions here. Paul P, what's up, Paul? Let's go, brother. All is great. Jesse Lee's in the house. What's up, Jesse? Amir, boom, baby, boom. Billy K, yeah, Finance Friday. So glad to see you. Billy K, great to see you. I know you're going to enjoy this one. Um, budgeting. Also, in terms of convenience and budgeting, is it better to follow the four by four, three weeks to shred, or living lean personal? I like the idea of four meals, not six. Well, that's up to you. It's up to you. Well, what we say is the four by four is for the novice, for the beginner that's really going through the health and habit phase. You're cleaning up your life. Once you have a very clear, structured goal, three weeks to shred it and living lean, that becomes the direct GPS to get you there as fast and efficiently as possible because we give you the very clear turn-by-turn -turn directions, nutritionally speaking and exercise training speaking. Right, We build you the exact perfect diet and exercise program to get you to your goal as fast and efficiently and healthy as possible. That is up to you. If anybody's interested in that, you can simply click the links below. Also, you can work on, with me one-on-one -on -one if you're interested. You can click that link to start a private chat with me um, where we can talk about fitness, fat loss, also finance. I, I do a lot of business consulting on that channel. Amir says... When you first started budgeting and saving, how did you plan a budget? And how did you factor in bills, discretionary fund, and debt? I'm trying to figure out how much I need in savings before budgeting. No, you budget right away. You budget right away. And here's the easiest way to budget. How much am I making? How much are my fixed expenses? Fixed expenses are your housing costs and your living costs. These are fixed expenses. Housing is your rent or mortgage, your taxes, and your interest. Those are your housing. Your living expenses are your utilities because 
If your water, if your electricity, if your heat is shut off, guess what? As long as you're paying your rent, you're not homeless. I lived in a home that had no water, no heat, no electricity for the majority of my childhood, right? There was a roof for me to go to as, as shambled as it was. There was a place for me to actually go to and crawl up into a sleeping bag and, and sleep on a pile of clothes, right, in, in a tiny little room. I had that. No heat, no electricity, no running water, but we were not quite kicked out of the house. Eventually, the house was foreclosed on due to poor financial stewardship by my parents. That's beside the point, but I think that also speaks to my expertise and knowledge in this area. The living costs are your, your utilities, your cell phone, your internet, your car payments. Hopefully, you don't have one. Your gas for your car, which is going up. You must budget that in. Your car insurance, your health insurance, also your food. Now, you can eat. We actually, in the College Diet Guide, we proved that you can actually eat six meals a day, very similar to the Living Lean menu, for $50 per week. We proved that in the College Diet Guide. We built that budget. We built that meal plan. We made it very clear, very obvious that that is certainly possible. Due to inflation, maybe now it's 60 or $75 per week. Maybe it is. I don't think it's that high. It hasn't gone up 150% since we wrote it. But the $50 might have turned to $60 or so. Very possible. Excuse me. Pardon me. Pardon me. I apologize for that. They're very, very bad manners of me. Um, are you playing with the AMC short squeeze? Yes, I do have a very small position in AMC that I was fortunate to pick up in the fives. You know, I, I picked it up in, in around five dollars or so. I was able to sell the majority of my shares when it hit up into the 60s. And I did keep a small little piece in case it eventually um, does, you know, ape its way to the moon and go to a thousand dollars like trade trades and many of the others say. But I just I don't think it's going there. But that's bonus. I'm playing with the house money at that point. That's why I didn't say and it's 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 small. It's, it's not a life changing amount. It's more just me gamifying the system and having a little bit of fun with it. But I did make a couple dollars on AMC because I was able to get in around five. You know, I, I got in, you know, kind of I started getting in maybe in the tens up to almost 15 and then it dropped and I was able to pick up more in the drop because I saw the FOMO. I saw the FOMO that was going into it, and then it did shoot up. I think I sold it somewhere in the 60s or so, and I, sh I sold it high 30s, high 40s, and again, I think low 60s. So I had a few different uh, limit orders to sell on the way up. But it wasn't life-changing money. It was just it was a nice, you know, take my wife out to a, to a big fancy dinner, you know, a, a couple times with, with the AMC money. That's not what my, my strategic investment advice is. This is not financial advice. This is just my opinion. That's not what my opinion um, is per se. My opinion is to invest primarily into index funds and ETFs. And like Shaq had said, in companies that create tremendous value to the, the consumer. Um, I do hold a few uh, shares of Apple, of, of, um, sorry, sorry, of Tesla. Um, I hold a little bit in like a JP Morgan in Etsy. Um, I'm not, I'm not very big into single stocks very much. Most of my, you know, investment is into retirement funds. I don't even see the money. It's automatic transfer. It goes directly into, uh, you know, another account that, <laughs> excuse me, goes into my 401k. We have a company 401k here. This is money I can't touch for another 15 or 20 years. I don't see it. I don't touch it. It just goes and grows. And then, you know, and a little bit of money, um, small speculative money that I quote, don't mind losing. Then I play a little bit of the individual stocks and just a tiny little bit of, of crypto. Billy K says, listen up, everyone. Wish I followed this advice 30 years ago. I'm making up for lost time. Don't be like me. Billy, every single person, every single person feels exactly the same way. My man, I wish I started earlier also. I wish I started earlier too, but Billy, you started to, the best time to start is yesterday. The second best time. Well, that's today, Billy. And you're already in it. You're already crushing it. Taylor, Taylor, brother, I'm going to shoot you a personal email here when I'm done this stream. So watch your inbox, Taylor. I'm going to shoot you a private message, personal message here soon. Looking forward to it, my man. Joe, Mike, good to see you on this Finance Friday. What are your thoughts on the costs of renting a home versus owning? Well, it really depends on your budget. Number one, do you have debt? If you carry debt, rule number one is get out of debt. 
We've done other videos on this. Get out of debt. Rule number one is get out of debt. I do not believe in carrying debt. I do not believe in using debt as a leverage to buy investment properties. I do not believe in debt at all. I have zero debt. Zero debt. I have zero debt on my home, zero debt on our investment properties. I have zero debt on my vehicles. I have zero debt. I do not have a credit card. In fact, I do not have a credit score. Not only do I not have a credit score, I do not even show up on the credit reports. It's as if I am a ghost. I don't even exist. True story. And I've spoken about this many times over the last 10 years or so for those who, who pay attention to this channel. I don't believe in it. It's not effective. I have been able to be utterly successful without using debt, without using leverage, without worrying about my credit score. If I cannot buy it for cash, I cannot buy it. I cannot afford it. Therefore, I must hustle until the point I have enough cash to purchase it. Period. The end. So if the market goes up or down, if the pandemic comes or goes, if I lose my job or not, doesn't matter. All my stuff stays my stuff. Nobody comes in and says they have to take it. Nobody tries to take it. Nobody has the right or ability to take it, right? Period, the end. So my thoughts on renting a home versus owning, number one is get out of debt. Do you have any debt, any debt, student debt, medical debt, credit card debt, car debt? Get out of debt. The only debt that you may have that I won't yell at you about is a mortgage on your primary residence. If you have a mortgage on your primary residence, I'm not mad at that. I will simply say pay that off as fast as possible. As fast as possible while following the four bucket strategy though. Follow the four bucket strategy while getting yourself out of that mortgage debt, paying that mortgage down as fast as possible. Now, I think Dave Ramsey discusses the average person following the Dave Ramsey program is able to pay off their home in seven years. That really goes to show you those 30-year mortgages are so overly weighted in the benefit of the bank due to compounding interest. The bank wants you to pay that mortgage off over 30 years. The car companies are now offering car loans. It used to be for three years, then four, then five, then six. Now the average car loan is seven years. People are actually financing vehicles seven years just so they can make the, they can afford the monthly car payment. They're paying nearly double the retail price of the car due to the intra, the compounding of interest over that seven year period. Nearly double. A $20,000 car will cost you with decent credit almost $40,000 if you actually keep it and pay it off at the end. Insanity. Where I would say buy a car for $5,000 save, save, save as if you were paying the car company. And at the end of the year, lever up to a 7,000. At the end of the next year, lever up to a 12,000. At the end of the next year, lever up to a 15 to 20,000. In a short period of time, that's what I did. I got a, I, I won't even go through the list of awesome freaking cars and Airstreams that I have doing exactly what I, I'm telling you right now. And that's the one thing, guys and gals, I'm telling you exactly what I did exactly what I did to not do what everybody else does, to not have the fear, not have the worry, not have all the issues and all the problems. My success was not because I, I, I make so much money per year by working my ass off. I make a nice, healthy living running my business, my hourly wage per se. I was able to achieve financial independence because of my ability to save and invest that money while reducing my expenses. Bucket number four, I was able to build that bridge account. That is the difference between myself and many of my peers. I work with a lot of pro athletes that make way more money than I do, yet my net worth is higher than theirs today. Think about that. Most of the athletes I work with made way more money in those years than I made, for sure. They paid me 5% of what they made. Think about that. I made 5% of what they made. They made 95%. I made 5%. We charge 5%. Over the course of my career, I made way less money through my hard fucking work than they made. As I stand here now, my net worth is vastly superior to theirs. Some of them have a zero or a negative net worth because they were paying 12, 14, $1,800 on leases for a Range Rover or a Maserati or, 
or whatever, or, or balling with a hundred hundred thousand dollar stupid chain. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding? Look, this watch was given to me by a buddy. Cost me zero. And this is this is amazing, by the way. Check this out. And this is a little tease. I got a watch this. You see that? What is that? What is that? That's a whole nother. That's uh, I'll have the uh, the the creator, the inventor of this uh, next week on the podcast. By the way, but anyway, anyway. So make sure nothing's on fire here. Um, what are your thoughts on the cost of renting versus owning? I rented until I could own. Brandy and I, we rented, rented, rented. We rented a home less expensive than we could afford, so we could save all that little margin, all that extra, and then we were able to purchase our first home for cash. 100%. That's what we did. So what kind, Jesse Lee, what kind of investments or appreciating assets that will take over my salary investment stocks, very green and young at the investments, but want to start now, any advice on where to start um, and then non-finance related. Okay. Awesome. So number one is I, I will lean towards real estate investment properties. So I, I, I own multiple investment properties in the Las Vegas area. These are primarily single family condominiums, one and two bedroom condominiums that rent between $1,200 and $1,800 per month. The first condo we purchased with thir was $30,000 and we were able to rent the $30,000 condominium for $600 per month. Now, 600 times 12 is $7,200. We were getting what nearly a 20% rate of return on that $30,000 investment. We were then able to sell that $30,000 condo for $60,000. We had saved up the $700, the $600 per month for two years. We sold that, that condo for an $80,000 condo that was paying us $1,200 per month. That condo then started to appreciate in value and the price started going up and we started to Airbnb. So no longer were we making $1,200 Per month, we were making about $1,000 per week, $125 per day in daily rentals, right? So we, we probably made about three grand per month, nearly tripling. Three grand per month times 12 months, $36,000 on an $80,000 investment. We were getting, what, 30 to 40% rate of return on that money. Think about that. $80,000. That was appreciating because that $80,000 condo, we were then able to sell for $147,000 in about four year period of time. This is what I'm talking about. Now, those $147,000, the $150,000 two bedroom condos, well, they rent for about $1,800 per month, which is what? $18,000, 20, about $20,000, $22,000 per year on 150,000. So now we're talking about maybe close to a 12 to 15% rate of return, but the $150,000 is appreciating at seven to 10% per year. As that price goes up, we are keeping that rent relatively fixed. Some of which we do Airbnb, some of which we have very nice families in there that we don't want to kick out. We, we really prioritize single moms because all of our, our condos and real estate is in very good school districts. That's one of our criteria. We want very good school districts and our expectation is our tenants will stay there for approximately three years. That is our hope. So a lot of single moms, a lot of like, you know, new couples, first time, you know, um, living together, getting married, you know, young, you know, people getting together and whatnot, good jobs, good work history. So Jesse, to me, that is ideal. Getting into that first real estate investment. Uh, Jesse, I know you're handy. You have more um, skills than I do. I don't have, I, like, I used to frame houses, but that doesn't give me a lot of finishing skills. Most of the properties out there that need a little bit of love, they don't need framing work. They need finishing work. I'm not really good at, at all the finishing, right? I don't have that type of skill set. I know a little bit, so I don't get screwed over, but I do have to bring in, people to help. I don't do any electrical. I don't do any plumbing. I can pick up stuff and move stuff. Um, but my suggestion is to look into lower priced single family dwellings, maybe two family. Like I would say, start with like a one family in a good school district that is reasonably rentable. Probably like the carpets are shit and needs needs paint, needs carpets, needs new shades on the windows. It needs a little beautification, needs some lipstick, but the bones are are good. 
that's a great way to get in because, and I'm, I know I'm, I'm slightly ranting here, but I hope it's valuable. Real estate goes up. Real estate appreciates over time. Three to 7% per year, no problem. And then if it is cash flowing, you have good tenants in there that are paying when they're supposed to. Now we will take, because we own our properties for cash, we're not in a rush to get any tenant in there. A lot of my friends who, I'm, I'm in a few real estate groups, a lot of my friends, they're so damn leveraged. Like, oh, I, I control $6 million in property. Like, bro, but you are so over leveraged. If you have two or three or four tenants who don't pay you for a month or two, you're screwed. Us, I, I don't want to go out of pocket for six months or a year on a property that's just sat there, but I don't have to pay. There's no mortgage that I have to service. There's no debt service for us. So we can let our property sit a little longer so we can find a highly desirable tenant to move in. We will, we will go through 40 different applications before we select the one family. We, we love families. We love the ability to give back. We provide um, a better living experience. Also, we do some things um, for the property that, that we, we don't really disclose out of the gate. We keep our prices slightly below what the market is because we want our tenants to stay a little bit longer. We don't raise rates as fast and as high as the market typically does because we want our tenants to stay in there long-term. I mean, I have a tenant in one of our properties that they've been there since 2012. We're almost on their 10-year anniversary. They, it's their home. They treat it like their home. It's beautiful. They, they, it's gorgeous. I, I want to hire them as a property manager like I wish. Um, so anyway, that, that, that's just, uh, you know, hopefully that's helpful for you, t for you guys. I, I wanted to give you insight from a, a true investor. Taylor, absolutely. Um, uh, Mike, love the view on debt. My dad is the same way. He is a ghost on the credit reports. Always told me if you don't have the cash in your pocket, you can't buy it, period. Exactly. Jay-Z said, if you can't buy it twice, you can't afford it. That's the way to look at it. That's the way to look at it. Now, people will talk all the time. You listen to the Robert Kiyosakas and many others out there who talk about debt, debt, debt. It's good debt, good debt, good debt, good debt. There is no good debt. There is no good debt because if your life gets turned upside down, if a black swan event happens, the pandemic happens, maybe your loan gets called for some reason. Maybe your margin call comes in. That happens. Me, Kevin's worth like $20 million. He's freaking out all the time about he's over leveraged on margin half the time. Why? That is, that is a, 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 not a, a very smart way to go about life, in my opinion. Anyway, for what point, for what purpose, to deal with the stress, to deal with the anxiety, to have that type of liability on your books, it makes absolutely no sense. I sleep like a baby. There is nobody that can come in and touch any of my stuff. All my stuff is there. There's no payments on any of my stuff. The, the, the pleasure that comes in that with that, my friends, what's the point of it all anyway? So now I can go and do all the things I want at any time I want. My family and I, we can, we can pick up and we can go live anywhere we want. We can go on vacation at any time and not worry about anything. Period. The end. We don't have to worry about anything. We don't have to freak. We don't have to stress. That's the point of financial independence. The whole purpose of Financial Fridays is to gift you guys with the knowledge of financial independence so you can get out there and live your life live your life life is not meant to slave away at a job for a darn paycheck money is simply a means of of exchange for opportunity and experience get your money to the point that you don't have to worry about your money anymore so you can get out there and experience life that's the whole point of this and how much do you really need how much do you really need, right? Jack Bogle has a great book um, called Enough. Jack Bogle is the, the founder of Vanguard. If you don't know Vanguard, you should. If you don't know Jack Bogle, go down the YouTube rabbit hole of Jack Bogle. One of my good friends turned me on to the book Enough that I never read. I always read Bogle's investment strategies, investment, investment, investment. And one of my buddies is, is well off. He's, he's retired in his mid-40s. He doesn't really have to work anymore. He does a little bit of volunteer stuff. He's sitting on, I don't know, how much, you know, seven, 
probably a seven to eight figure net worth somewhere that he's cash flowing. His his investments are providing him a lifestyle that he was not capable of providing when he was working 60 hours per week as a small business owner. Sold his business, cashed in some properties, has himself well set up. Now he's like, I got enough. I'm just trying to like make the world a better place now. Live his life, travel experience. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. But first you have to get there. You have to get through the working phase right now. The, 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 the income generation phase, the accumulation phase with which you save it, the investment phase, which then you grow it. And then you can exit out into the financial independence phase. So the four bucket strategy, my friends, I really appreciate you guys for being here. I see no more questions coming in. Make sure you do jump over. You check out the Mike Dolce nose channel. Lots of great information over there. Um, Oh, Jesse just says, what can I do to help my wife be successful on her new journey? Just want to help her achieve what she wants. Brother, I appreciate that. I appreciate you. I appreciate the question. My strong suggestion is just be her corner. Stand back and support what she's the same way I do with my wife. I do not tell my wife what to do. I stand ready to support her in what she chooses to do. I give her the time that she so desperately needs Brandy does not ask for time. She doesn't ask for free time. She does not, which is me time, as I like to say. Brandy does not put herself first. She puts everybody else first. She's always, always moving. She's always working. She's always in the kitchen. She's always cleaning stuff up. She's always doing all the stuff she does. And I'm like, hey, why don't you go sit down on the couch? Yeah, yeah, but, but I want to get this fit. I say, here, you go sit down on the couch. Let me, let me take care of the, the kitchen. I'm going to take the kids out. Because for Brandy, if the kids are around, the kids are in the house, she's always on call. I'm going to take the kids to the park. You can stay here or go somewhere. Whatever you want to do, go do. Don't even tell me. I'm going to take them out just to give her that time. So Jesse, as, as a husband, 21 years, I'm 21 years married, right? That's something that's probably rare, I think, to most people to even hear that. 21 years I've been with Brandy. I do. I'm a black belt in the marriage game, by the way. Allowing my wife to be independent and autonomous and have her own life outside of the family model, outside of her being a, a wife and a mother. I want her to just be her. And I support that. Just the way she supports me to be me, the crazy animal that I am. Right? I mean, I... I I'm, I'm, I'm an insane human being and she totally supports me in all that with no judgment. Well, that's not the way I would do it. Never, ever, 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 ever. Like even Brandy works out. Like she does her own thing. I don't write Brandy's program. I don't write Brandy's meal plan. I don't tell her how to work out. I don't say when, if she has any questions, I say, Hey, I found, you know, these to be successful. I might say, Oh, here's like, I speak to her. Like I speak to a friend. I found this awesome exercise, like lower body exercise. Actually, it's a rear lunge. Like, can I show you? She'll be like, yeah, okay. I'll go downstairs and like, you know, cause we got the TRX set up in the gym training area. And I like showed her it, it's a rear lunge holding a TRX strap. But at the top, it's actually the, the you, you want to rotate your pelvis through. So it's a knee lift at the top. It's not like a Muay Thai knee. It's just a simple rear lunge into that knee lift. I said, now, you know, put your hand on your glute. You can actually feel the contraction, the deeper contraction. That's one thing I've suggested to her in probably the last six months. Exercise related, right? Most people are like, oh, you must tell your wife everything to do. I tell her nothing to do. Nothing to do. The only thing I will say, like, if I notice that she's, you know, not exercising as much as she normally does, I'll be like, hey, have you, you worked out lately? She's like, oh, no, I got to get back into that. Like, thank you. Yeah. Like I, I kind of fall, we all, and she'll say the same thing to me. Like you going to the gym today? It's been a little while. Like, ah, yeah, you know, you like, you fall into a rut without criticism. Just like, Hey, I, I know like exercise makes you feel good. You look, you're beautiful. You look absolutely amazing. Like, have you, have you, you've been working out though? Like getting those endorphins running, you know, just staying on top of it. Right. You know, she's got a little bit of like a, a lower back issue. Um, just that she's had, you know, from most of her life being a writer sat in chairs for, for, you know, hours and hours on end and blah, blah, blah. So it's like, Hey, how's the back doing? How's the back feeling? 
So Jesse, your long answer and everyone listening, of course, I'm always conscious that other people are listening. Give your spouse the autonomy to be independent outside of you, outside of your opinion, outside of your thoughts, outside of your judgment. Even if you might know more, more about a topic that they're interested in. I probably know a little bit more about exercise and nutrition than Brandy does. But it's her journey. It's not my journey. And there was a point that I would like try and tell her what to do. Oh, you should do this. You should do this. Let me build a program. Here's the diet. And it became like, dude, don't tell me what to do. I was like, you know what? You're right. It's like, like writing. She's a much better writer than I am. When I write, I, I sit down and I write in, in my style, my way. She feels that I overuse commas. She, you know, feels that I frame things from first person perspective more so than is necessary in a story. I, say, I understand that's your philosophy, but that's not how I work. Whether or not that makes sense to you, I get it, but I, I do not conform well to this other style. Like this is, I write the way that I think. So, so we don't clash on certain topics. I just do my thing. I'll say, Hey, can you read this for me? Can you edit this for me? She'll say, Hey, like my squats just don't feel right. Can you take a look? I'm like, Oh yeah. And I'll look, I'll say, it's your shoes. Like, what do you mean? There's too much cushioning in those shoes. Therefore, when you squat down, there's a lot of roll. It's like you're standing on an air disc or a pillow. That's what shoes are made for force compression. Sh sneakers are terrible, by the way. Basketball sneakers are terrible. Like walking and running shoes are terrible for exercise, for resistance exercise, because what makes them really good for that force compression to reduce the force compression, to dull that, that's why it's that, that soft rubber, the air pockets, the pillows. When we train, when we're generating force, like in the squat, let's say, or the deadlift or the overhead press, we want to reduce that, that um, um, force reduction. We're trying to increase force production from the floor through the bones of the feet. She's like, yeah, I feel like I'm just totally unstable. It's your shoes. Let's take your shoes off. Pop the shoes off. She's like, oh my God, like I can feel it where it's supposed to be felt. She's not all rolling around. Um, so anyway, oh, I went long here because I thought that there's probably I could give greater context to, to everyone else listening to Jesse happy here. You really helped me become a better man, husband, father and fighter. Jesse, man, that is that is the uh, the quad fecta man, husband, father and fighter. Boom. We hit all the boxes there, Jesse. Well, it, it's an honor and a pleasure, my friend, to, to know you, to work with you and also to work with your family, to play a small, tiny little role um, in just in helping you guys. So everyone here, I appreciate you so much all on Facebook, on YouTube. Thank you guys all for being here. This was a fun one. Go back and watch from the very beginning before Bucket Strategy. I'm sure the legend Dave B will be hopping on here soon to timestamp this uh, for us. So look in the comments for that. I'll lead it or throw it into the description also. And then everyone, if you want to chat with me, you want to live chat with me? Uh, you want to work with me one-on-one? -on -one, or do you want to start your own personalized diet and exercise program? Click those links below. And I do want to say thank you to our sponsor, Certified Piedmontese. You can save 25% on grass-fed, grass-finished beef, fillets and bovet and flank steaks and tomahawks, ground beef, um, liver, like the liver king, all at Certified Piedmontese. Um, use that Dolce promo code, save 25%. I do not get a kickback from those promo codes. It's very clear. Use it. Please use it. Save the 25% and also get free shipping on orders over $99 delivered to your door. I rarely endorse anything. You guys know that. Certified Piedmontese, I wholeheartedly endorse. This is the only, the only commercially bought meat that we have in our home. Certified Piedmontese. Everything else is wild caught. Mostly it's fish. So, Check it out. Um, Ruben says, let's see, walking three times one hour list each day before meals when I'm hungry is too much. Walking three times a day or no, three, three times a week, one hour list each day. I don't understand. Walking, walking three times one hour lists each day before meals. I'm sorry. I don't understand. Typically I walk 30 to 60 minutes per day. I, I, like 30, 36, 30 to 60 minutes per day, I think is ideal, Ruben. Hopefully that helps. Sean says, Mike, we have a $10,000 available for our one-year-old's college fund. 
put it in a nest college fund or use something else like a mutual fund. I'm not familiar what the nest is. We have ours in 529s, a 529 um, fund that is set up for us. I believe we use American funds, although we're processing, we're transferring uh, that over to another uh, provider just simply before the ease of use for us. We set it up years ago as an American fund vehicle, um, only to find that they're, they're hitting up with a couple, I mean, very in insignificant charges, like, like 20 some odd dollars. But over the course of, of 15, 18 years, that adds up. So we're actually transferring ours. But 529, you can have 529s in Fidelity, in Vanguard, um, in American funds, Charles Schwab. There's many different ways to set up a 529. I really like the concept of a 529. I appear to be a same thing. Okay, I, I thought so. Um, Nest, I'm just personally not familiar uh, with uh, the Nest term. Um. Let me briefly just see here. Um, the nest, the metal arc nest. Uh, oh, put your level on a track to say towards their goals. Take two minutes. Enroll today. Learn. I'm just reading it right now. What the nest feature is. Tax advantages. Um, yeah, I don't see a difference between a nest and a 529. That does not mean there are not differences per se. A 529 is a very easy investment vehicle that's dedicated for higher education. And the beautiful thing about the 529 now, as far as I know, check with your uh, CPA on this, 529 can be transferred to anyone in your family, which means we have a 529 for my oldest daughter, 529 for my youngest daughter. Let's say that they go through to school and that they both get scholarships. 100% they get these division one scholarships and they're all the money in their 529. They simply don't need any more. Well, there's two things that are great for that. You could actually dollar for dollar write off the amount of savings from the scholarship. So let's say they had a hundred thousand dollars in their 529. They got a $100,000 scholarship. That $100,000 can now be written off and used against that scholarship. That's awesome. Or that 529, let's say they decide, hey, they're not good. They, they hit it big as, as rock stars, right? They, they both play musical instruments. They, they, they hit it big as rock stars and they just don't go to higher education, though I would still strongly, strongly, strongly suggest they at least get business degrees, especially so they can, and finance degrees so they can figure out their own careers. Daddy will be pushing hard. I want them both to be engineers, by the way. That, that is my goal. I'm plugging into their minds now. Um, but anyway, then let's say they don't use it. That can simply be applied to maybe Brandy wants to go back to school and get her PhD. She already has her master's degree. Then she can actually use that for her PhD program. Or maybe I can go back and, and, and get something that I want. Um, or maybe it goes on to their children. They save it. It keeps growing and they can pass it to their children down the road. That's one of the beauties of the 529 program. As long as it stays in your family, it can really be applied to anyone. That's pretty awesome. Um, now, here's another little 529 hack. That once you get married, you might take out a 529 on yourself and then transfer it to your child. So let's say you get married, like Brady and I, we didn't have kids until shit, 15 years after we were married on purpose, by the way, that was a part of the plan. But we could have taken out 529s that would have grown for 15 years by the time our children were born. They would already had 15 years of growth in a 529. We probably never would have had to fund it again. We didn't actually start ours until the year our children were born. Just a thought. Speak with your CPA, though, on that. Again, not financial advice, just opinion from some dude standing in a gym. Um, one hour before the meal, one hour before the meal two, and one hour before meal three. Ruben, that sounds like a lot. That's three. I I'm not mad at all the walking. That sounds like a lot of walking. I would say, what's your goal? Do you just enjoy it? If so, fine. If you're doing it for fat loss, I'd say you probably don't need to do that much for sure. Three, that's three hours a day of walking. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. If you enjoy it, I'm not mad at it. But that might be too much. I would, I would love to see an hour a day of walking. That's great. Maybe another 20 or 30 minutes of, of you know, some sort of cardio, respiratory, cardiovascular specific activity maybe another 20 or 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes of some form of resistance exercise, maybe, maybe, you know, 20 to 40 minutes of some sort of skill specific exercise. Maybe you pick up tennis or, you know, you do a little bit of, uh, of Muay Thai, um, or jujitsu. I, 
I don't know. I would look for a little bit more diversity, diversity if that's something you enjoy, though, Ruben. All right, guys and gals, it's, it's 60 minutes into this stream. I appreciate you all for being here. Thank you once again. And uh, that's all I got. I'll be seeing you guys soon. Until next time. There we go here. Until next time. Boom! <laughs>